I come home from work, I ask my wife what she wants me to do, and I do it. I'm a great husband. And I say to them, a woman hates having to tell a man what to do. Bed. Love. Bed. Bed. Love. <laughs> beyond. beyond. Bed, love, beyond. Bed, love, beyond. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Bed Love Beyond, the podcast for the hopeful and the hater in us to discuss sex, love, and whatever's clever with like-minded people like you who are also in limbo with love like us. Thank you for listening to us on Podbean, iTunes, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, and Google Play Music. Please rate, review, like, and subscribe to us on any of the devices that you listen to. So as you can see that I did the uh, intro by myself, so that means that Jennifer isn't here today. She had a little uh, complication, So, uh, but she'll be back, obviously, on the next episode. And this episode is episode 78, and it's entitled, I'm Tired, She Said. What's the issue with today's man? And we have a special guest today who is an author, and his name is Elliot Katz. Elliot, how are you doing today? Doing great. How are you doing? I I am good, and you are the author of "Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants: Timeless Wisdom on Being a Man." So I read this over the weekend, and I have to I have to tell you I am definitely uh, two sides on it. I absolutely loved it. I I really loved the book, but it made me so angry <laughs> to tell you the truth. Um, uh, it was it was it was really good. Um. It, it it was like how uh, it, it got me um, it got me fired up because it just reminded me of like those times where let's say you're watching let's say a horror film and you see somebody hear a noise in the background and that character is going towards the noise and you're like no don't do that what are you doing you know you're just try you're talking to the person and not, and obviously they can't hear you because it's a movie and I was doing the same thing with this book I was like reading this and and I was just so like like passionate and like angered because I was uh I was kind of upset with what the grandma had to say all the time when uh, the grandma and, uh, where where uh, the grandpa and Michael were speaking with each other about uh the grandma's uh, discretions or anything like that but uh before we get into that can you can you please explain what your book is about okay well it's a result of a journey that I went on let me give you some background. I was married, then I got divorced. And like a lot of people, at first I blamed the other person. Then I came to the point of asking myself, what do I have to learn from all this? And that really set me out on my own journey to learn what does it mean to be a man in, in a relationship. And you know, today we hear a lot about masculine confusion and the, the masculinity crisis. And really, uh, I, I realized that this is what it's about, that men are unsure what it means to be a man. So the, first thing I did was I, I started listening to other men and, you know, I, uh, talking to them, listening to them. The more I talk, listen, the more I realized a lot of us are confused. Then I read books on relationships and uh, they really didn't say anything to me. And it's only when I turned to the teachings that fathers and other older male role models used to teach younger men about being a man, I was blown away because it coincided with what I heard women complain is lacking in men today. They don't show leadership, they don't make decisions, they don't take responsibility. There's this giant disconnect. So that's what this book is about. It's the wisdom and insights and teachings that fathers and other older male role models used to teach younger men a bit about being a man. One thing I realized and I read is that you know, a man generally has to learn how to be a man. It doesn't come naturally. He needs a role model, like a, a father or another older male role model and uh, and that seems to have been lost to this generation and I think that's what's underlying a lot of you know failed marriages failed relationships the frustration that so many women tell me ex express how they feel about men today that they say something is missing in men today they don't men don't really act like a man should act I meet women in their 40s and 50s and they say who are single and they say I can't find a man like I want a man who's strong, who's a rock that I can lean on. And and there's just not, there just seems to be lacking in, in men today. So that's what this book is about. It's the insights that can help people improve their marriages, improve their relationships, and not end up divorced and their children from broken homes. So with the, um, with the book, with the characters, uh, Michael, Grandpa, Leanne, Grandma, um, where, where are these like fictitious people? Like, 
generally, yes. It, what, what it is, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a story about a, a, a grandfather teaching these uh, insights to his grandson who was married for seven, eight years, and, you know, his marriage is in trouble. And his grandfather's been married for 50 years, and he asked, like, why, like, what is it, you know, teach me what you know. So they, they, are, they are made up, and the reason it's the grandfather teaching to his grandson is, is to show that it's missed the generation, that the father, he didn't learn from his father, so he's going back to his grandfather and saying, well, what, what did you learn that I didn't learn that can help my marriage? Hmm, okay, I, I didn't even catch that. I mean, that's, that's, that's smart. Um, so uh, what exactly, what are some of the things that women are saying that men are missing? Like, uh, w- Why are women frustrated specifically? Well, there's three main things. Okay. They want men to show leadership, they want men to make decisions, and they want men to take responsibility. You know, even a simple thing, I couldn't count the number of single women who tell me a man will ask them out on a date to go out for a cup of coffee, and he can't even decide where to go for a cup of coffee. He wants her to decide. And then when they finally get to a place, you know, he wants her to choose what table they should sit at. And I explain to them, you know, when a man go, when a woman goes up with a man as a potential partner, She's looking like, how, you can't even decide where to go for a cup of coffee. How would you handle real challenges in family life and a marriage? It's a big turn off. A lot of women have said if a man does that, he can't even choose a place to go for, uh, for a date or for a cup of coffee. It's a big turn off. It's, 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 like, it's a big strike against them. Hmm. Uh, and I can, I, can, uh, I can see where that's coming from. But do you think it, it could also be because, let's say... The man does choose something like either I don't know a coffee or restaurant to meet the person, and how about if the woman changes the idea? Do Do you think that's why like men do that? They're just like okay, you decide. I I remember I remember in your book, uh, somebody was really apprehensive with the with a man saying you decide, and I was wondering well maybe he just says you decide is because he knows that if he gives a place. You're just going to change the answer, so what's the point? So you decide, and we'll just do it. Right. Very good question. So when a woman does that, you have to analyze what's going on. Okay. It, 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 you know, have you said, let's go to this fish restaurant, and she has an anaphylactic reaction to the smell of fish. Maybe that's why she doesn't want to go there. That's one thing. But if you try to change it, she may be testing you to see if you're strong enough to say, well, I think we should go here. Like women do, they want a man to be strong, so they'll test him to see will he stand up? Because if he can stand up to me, he can stand up for me. And if he can't even stand up to me, well, how will he stand up for for me as a, and, a, and our family that we would have together? So, you know, use your judgment. Is it something valid? If you ask her to go to a movie and she says, well, I've seen it three times already, okay, well, that's a re- good reason. But if she says, if she's trying to change things, she may be testing you to see. Will he stand up and you know stand his ground and be strong? It's a test. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, do you feel that the the rise, I guess, of like the third wave, like feminism, has like affected women's mindset for a suitor? You know, it's an interesting question. Women ask. People ask me. Like women say, they are strong and independent and successful in business and professions. So has that been a factor? But yes, it has in a sense that women want men who's strong. A woman who's successful in business, she doesn't want a guy who's just saying, whatever you want, I'll do whatever you want. You know, I've had women who are successful in business say to me, I may be a boss at work, but I'm with a man, I want to feel like a woman. I want him to take charge. And when a man takes charge, it makes her feel special. That's what she wants. Mm-hmm. Um, so what does acting like a man, quote-unquote, entail? Well, I, I talk about three main things. Show leadership. Yeah. You know, know what's going on in your family, know what's going on in your relationship. If you see a problem, don't step back. Don't ask her what to do. Find a solution and implement it. Just keep doing it, and you will be a hero. Make decisions. You know, I've been to weddings where the father, the groom, will give a speech and say, my advice to you, my son, yes, dear. Like, is this... You know, that that's just go along with it. Whatever your wife wants, just say yes, or yes, yes. Don't make any decisions. <laughs> well, I was at a, I've been at, last wedding I was at like that. 
the father of the groom said that. Well, I'm impressed with the father of the bride. And, he, and you know, he's telling me that this, this, this is a problem. They've been married, and this, the husband won't make any decisions. Like, whatever she asks him, you know, what do you think? What should we do? He says, you decide. Whatever you want, you decide. Well, he thinks he's being this nicest guy. I'm not controlling. I'm the nicest guy. How could she be frustrated? But to her, it's like, you know, she she wants a man who can step forward and make decisions. She wants to be able to look up to him. She doesn't want a man who just does whatever she wants. You know, I tell men, you know, men will say to me, you know, like, and smart people, they say, you know, I come home from work, I ask my wife what she wants me to do, and I do it. I'm a great husband. And I say to them, a woman hates having to tell a man what to do. Right. It makes her feel like he's a child, and she is his mother. Mm-hmm. She hates it. She doesn't want to tell you what to do. She wants you to know what's going on, see what needs to be done, take charge, and do it. Because if you're just coming home and saying, tell me what to do and I'll do it, well, you're just being like a nanny. What's the difference between you and a nanny? You're a father. You're not a nanny. You're a husband. You're not a nanny. Mm -hmm. And the third thing, take responsibility. Don't think, well, if I give in to her, (laughs) I let her make all the decisions, then, well, if it goes wrong, I can blame her. Well, you know, people don't have sympathy for a man who just is is going around saying he's a victim of his wife. You know, men think, well, I I let her do it. We we did it your way, so you can't blame me. But if you thought it could go wrong, it was your responsibility to step forward and and not let it go on. I, soon after my, uh, my marriage ended, I got together with a fellow who, also had separated recently, and it was so amazing. Here I thought I was in this unique situation, and like our situation was so similar, I was just blown away. Until he said something that really shocked me. He said, his wife ran up $50,000 on the credit cards. And I was like, how could you let that go on? I mean, she shouldn't have done it, but, you know, you have children. You, you, you had a responsibility not to let it go on. And that really hit me, because I realized... How could he let that go on? How could I let go on the things that I let go on that I knew were wrong? Nobody has any sympathy for men who who, who are going around saying, I'm a victim of my wife, I'm a victim of my wife. They think, you know, as much as we believe in gender equality, we still expect a man to be responsible for what goes on in his home. And if you blame your wife, nobody has any sympathy for you. So since nobody, you're not going to get any sympathy, and you better step forward. If you see it's wrong, you can't let it go on. Yeah, wow. That that, that fifty thousand dollar run up, that's that's insane. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Like, Unbelievable. Yeah, I, I feel bad for that guy. Um so with with the title, uh, being the strong man a woman wants. Now this might be a little triggering, but I guess the question I wanna ask is what makes the woman correct? In their assumption of what a man should act like because before you were talking about how you and, and the people in, and uh, Michael the character in the book went to other men to find out what they need to be so right. why should when a woman says I want the, I want a man to be this 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 and this and this why should we why should we take heed in that because you know what I'm trying to say, like why why should we take their advice as to what a man should be when they're not men? That's a very good question. I think I think you know a woman has certain needs, mm-hmm. and you know if you're married and you have children, she really wants you to be the man of the family, the husband, the father, and a lot of women. You know I've got comments from women who read the book. One woman wrote, if my husband had understood these crucial truths, our marriage of 38 years would not have disintegrated. A, a lot of, you know, one woman said, you know, I've met a lot of men who are nice people, but I couldn't marry them because they wouldn't take responsibility, and I cannot be with a man who, who won't take responsibility. You know, she says, you know, when a, man, when a woman marries a man, she's trusting him with her life. So it's really important. So if you want a, a successful relationship and a successful mar- marriage, this is really what women want. And the tragedy is that so so many young men today, they grew up in families without fathers, their parents are divorced, so their fathers worked long hours, they went to school, 
they, all the teachers are women, they watch TV, men are portrayed as incapable buffoons. You know, they weren't taught these things. And, and you know, it's not only to have a good marriage, but this is really about growing as a human being. It's about personal growth, taking leadership, making decisions, t- taking responsibility. It's all, you know, you have to challenge yourself. It's not easy. It's easier to step back and say, here, well, you decide. You, you, I'll let you decide. I'm being this nice guy. No, it's all growing as, as a person. It's all personal growth. So really, it's for your benefit, and it's for the benefit of your marriage and your relationship and the benefit of your family. Okay. Because um, uh, uh, the reason why I re- uh, the, your book resonated with me is because I am pretty much – well, I'm not the Michael – of your story, I'm not married. I don't. I don't, I don't have any kids. But I do feel kind of uh, like a wayward son type of thing that I'm trying to find a the way to become a man because sometimes I feel that I'm not one, and sometimes I have been told that either directly or indirectly by women who just. Uh, uh, act a certain way to me and and but they'll act a completely different way to another person i'm just like oh wow she doesn't think that i'm a man or or that i am even like a like sexual being so what are some of the things that you can give advice to men who are listening to the show and also myself like what are the things that we we can do to uh at least get on the right path to i guess mandom (laughs) okay well comes out of those three important things, show leadership, make decisions, take responsibility. But in terms of dating, you know, well, first of all, you know, sometimes men, you know, they, they act like they can become too feminized. So when they want to be romantically involved with a woman, she says, well, I feel you're a friend. You know, it's like it's like she's saying, I feel like you're a girlfriend because you're acting like a woman. But the thing is, all those new ideas about dating, just, you know, put them aside and, sh- and really do things the way men used to do them. You know, when you meet a woman, ask her out, ask for her phone number, take the lead, pursue her. You know, it's it's really important that a man pursue a woman. Uh, and then, you know, take her out, pick her up, open the car door for her, all those old fashioned things that we think, you know, I, no, one, no woman has ever said to me, if I open the car door for her or open another door for her, she said, oh, I can't open What do you think? I can't open the door myself? <laughs> <laughs> right. Nobody's ever said that. They all, they say they can't get over it. That, you know, things like that, you know, take, you know, make it be a man with a plan. You take, don't ask her. When you ask her for a date, don't say, okay, what would you like to do? What time should we go? Be a man with a plan. Think about it in advance. Think about what would we both enjoy doing? You know, what I know of her and her interests, mm-hmm. what would we both enjoy doing? And say, you know, ask her out. I thought we'd go to this place. You know, it's here. I'll come pick you up at this time. You pick her up. You, you drive her there. You can pay for her. You know, I I cannot believe that I I even participated in these discussions where men will say, "Well, who pay for the first date? Like, what if the woman makes a lot more money than you?" I said, "It's not about money. It's about making her feel special. All these things are about making her feel special." So, like, you know, if she makes tons more money than you, you don't have to take her to a fancy place you can't afford. Don't, if you can't afford it, don't take her there because that's not huge. They say, take her to a place where you can afford to pay for both of you. That's what she wants. You know, I've had so many women say to me that you know, a man takes them out for a cup of tea and he won't even pay for the tea. And he thinks, oh, I'm showing I believe in equality. Believe me. <laughs> Splitting the bill is not the way to show you believe in equality. Pay for her. It makes her feel special. It's not about the amount of money. It, it's, it's, you know, and sometimes... You know, a woman will take out her wallet, like, and like, want to pay, offer to pay. It's, it's, she's testing you to see if you're going to insist on paying. You know, pay for her, then take her home. Make sure she gets home safely. You know, w- women like that. <laughs> women like that. You, you're showing you're strong. You're taking the lead. You're not asking them what they should do. Don't. It's not like you're not dictating them. What you should do? Just say, I thought we would go to such and such a place. I heard it's really good, or the music's great, or this is a great movie. Show you, you spent the time thinking about it, but you would both enjoy doing. That makes her feel special. It's like you didn't just call me up and ask me to plan a date. Right. Big turn off. Okay. So all those, you know, ways that people did it, did it in the past. Do it. It works. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Oh, e- e- even in the day of the strong, independent woman. Oh, absolutely. Because a strong, independent woman wants a strong, independent man. She doesn't want a weak man. Mm. Okay. Um, we have a, a, a little surprise. Um, apparently, Jennifer was able to make the podcast. So <laughs> what's going on, Jennifer? Better late than never, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, uh, Elliot, Jennifer, Jennifer, Elliot. Hey, Elliot. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm, Jennifer. I'm sorry I missed the first like portion of this. Um, I uh, I was out and I'm now I'm back. <laughs> I was, you know, hunting for the eclipse and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So with uh, I saw some interesting things in uh, your book and I and I definitely want to address them. So on uh. Page 22, I like this part where uh, Michael and uh, Sarah are are speaking to each other. And it says, if you don't lead, I can't dance. Can you please elaborate on that? Right. So that's a metaphor, right? So in in the old style of dancing, which they're doing their waltz, it's a man and woman dancing together. And the man is expected to lead, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing. So he, he, this Michael is asking his grandmother, you know, there's this, there's this uh, concept in um, counseling, like if the marriage is like the couples dance, when one steps forward, the other steps back, and she says, well, it is like a dance in a different way, that if you don't lead, I can't dance. So if you're dancing the waltz and the man doesn't lead, well, the dance not to really work. So it's the same thing. It's like she really wants a man to take the lead in a relationship, and if he doesn't do that, it, it's not going to work. Yeah, I, I really uh, respected that line. I, I like that a lot. If you don't lead, I can't dance. Meaning, like, yeah, exactly what you said. I, I think that's um really cool. Um, I don't know. I like, like, I get it, and I guess there's times where I would agree with that, and then there's other times, being the alpha female that I am, that I'm like, well, if you're not gonna lead, then let me show you how it's done. <laughs> so. But yeah, but wouldn't that aggravate you because um the man is supposed to lead sometimes i mean it depends on like i mean if we're literally talking about dancing i can't dance uh me and my boyfriend went to like a formal dance class once and like i'm unteachable <laughs> <laughs> i'm unteachable i'm like i don't like this i don't get it i'm not doing it um but uh i'm not good at being led i'm not good at being told what to do either like i have to want to do it and the only time that i want to do it is when like I want to be like semi subservient to my man. So, I don't know. Other times I'm just kind of like, this is what I'm doing. Are you coming? <laughs> how, how, how do you feel about that uh, issue, uh, Elliot? Where, uh, okay, well, with, with an alpha Jennifer, female? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, I think, I think you, you made a good point, and, and there's a difference. You know, take, taking the lead is not about being a dictator who dictates to you, this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing. You know, we have to do everything my way. What I'm talking about is the man who's the complete opposite, who shows no leadership, who's passive, who asks you out on a date and say, Jennifer, would you like to go on Saturday night? And, the, and then you say, yes. Well, what, oh, well, what, I don't know. What would you like to do? What time should I be? He, he, he puts everything on you. Would you like right. that? That's no, no, no. I totally get that that side of things. Like, I think in the beginning, Sorry, I totally understand that side of things. In the beginning of my relationship that I'm in now, like my boyfriend was a lot more, um, made, lot, made a lot more initiative to be like, oh, let's do this or let's do that. And I like the fact that he was like planning things for us to do or he'd like go on Groupon or something and be like, oh, there's this concert, you know, like, would you like to come with me? And I was like really excited about that. And now that we're like, you know, a year and a half deep into the relationship, like those things kind of don't happen as much. You know, because one, I guess, like, you know, we both have, like, we're all, like, kind of saving for things. And, you know, the romance part of things has kind of, like, died out. And I guess I do miss that part of, the like, the taking the lead of, you know, I have this great thing planned for us. And in my head, I'm like, oh, like, we can have a picnic in the park and it would be wonderful. But then, like, there's also a part of me that's like, why can't he think of that? Like, it's not that tough guy. So, yeah, I get it. I do get that. Martini, that's just what I was saying, right? Yes. Is that what I was just saying to you? Yep. <laughs> it's it's true. Yep, it's exactly what you said. Um, so there there was a there was another uh part on there, uh, page twenty four with feelings, and I actually showed this to Jennifer, and we had a little uh talk about it um uh like a a while a while back, 
and uh, it was between uh, Michael, I believe, and his uh, grandma. And I, I just want to just read this little passage right here. And she was, uh, the grandma says, he's a good man, a tower of strength. And Michael was surprised. Does, does grandpa talk about his feelings? Feelings? Sometimes he does. But when I hear a man always talk about his problems, I shake my head. I want a man who is strong and sure of himself. And it makes me feel safe and loved. It's hard to admire a man who's, who always talks about his problems. Smiling to herself, she said, it reminds me of something my mother said. A woman wants to admire and look up to her man and she, but she doesn't want him to look down on her um so i want to ask you because pretty much this podcast is all about us sharing our feelings but more importantly me too i use it as a kind of like a therapeutic thing so am, am i uh sabotaging myself in expressing my feelings all the time like am i uh driving women away it's a matter of degree. If you're doing it all the time, it, it, it turns women off because she wants a man who's strong, who she can lean on, and, and, and who's a rock. You know, you know. somebody once asked me, uh, is when a man cries, is that a sign of strength? And I said, well, you know, if someone you love, if your mother, your father has passed away, yeah, it's normal to cry, but if, if you, every day you're coming home upset and crying about something that happened at work, it's a big turn off. She, she doesn't, you know, as much as they say, oh, we want a man to express his feelings, sometimes, occasionally, but not all the time, it's a big turn off because she she wants a man that, who's a rock, who's strong, that she, she can lean on. And, and if you're always, like, expressing it, you're, you know, you're upset about things, you're getting emotional about things, she, she doesn't see you as that rock. And, and that, you know, it doesn't mean you can't express it to other people. You know, you know, you can talk to your friends if you have a problem. But somehow, a woman wants a man who's strong, who she can lean on. It's not just gonna crumble <laughs> under her. Hmm. Um. Okay. I mean, yeah, I understand. And I, and I was talking about this with uh, Jennifer too. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I understand what you're saying, and and I do agree. But also at the same time, I feel like I, I feel that it's a disservice to just play this stoic unfeeling man in front of her all the time like i know that the man is supposed to be there for the woman when she breaks down but who's going to be there for the guy if he can only just be this certain persona it's really a matter of degree it, it, you know if you're doing it every day it's a big turn off you know sometimes you know you look for your to your spouse for that support in a difficult time it's a wonderful thing Right, but if you're doing it every day, it's it's like, hey, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't, she finds it hard to look up to you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, also, I, I saw this thing, and then this, this kind of this kind of got me uh, scared. It was about uh, the overgrown child, where it says, uh, if a father shows himself to be only a good natured, overgrown child, he deprives his son of a strong model to pattern himself after. He also deprives his daughter of a good male pattern on which to build her future relations with the whole male sex and particularly with her future husband. Now, um, I consider myself a very like playful gentleman and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, some people say that I can be like a big kid. Um, but are you are you saying in this that that might be uh, like a, a disservice or like or, like there needs to be a time where I need to like put my foot down and be the man? Good question. Okay, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with being playful and having fun with your kids, but they're they're looking to you to learn, like your sons are looking to you to learn how to be a man, and your daughter is looking to you as an example of what a man should be, like if she's to, in terms of looking for a future spouse. So you can be fun and, and you're playful, but there are times, that, you know, the most important job of a father is to teach his children about life and, and how to live in this world and how to succeed in this world. So you're, you know, just letting them run wild and not because you're afraid that, you know, if you, 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 you try to reprimand them that they're not going to like you and they're not going to be your friend. Well, then you're, you're failing them. It doesn't, you know, it's not about being a stern, strict, you know, disciplinarian. It's just like saying, well, my job is to teach my children proper behavior in this world. And if I, if I, if I don't teach them to, that to them, I'm failing them. So it's a matter of, Yes, have fun with them. 
you know, laugh a lot, play games, but teach them the right way to be. That that is the father's most important job. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I love this thing. I Actually, I, like I said, um, I really did love this book. And I loved how, like, the grandfather had the notebook and uh, just kept talking about all these things that were, like, centuries old and, uh, you know, su- supporting everything that he talked about. I really like I really like that aspect because that's kind of like how I looked for uh, uh, information, too, you know, just to support whatever I'm talking about. And I love the word uh, husbandship. So can you explain explain what husbandship means? Yeah, that's fine. I just want to say, you know, like it, it really reflected my own journey because, like I said, I was looking in books, written, you know, contemporary books, and I just didn't find the answers. It's only when I looked at these old sources that really for centuries men have been writing advice on being a man for younger men. And, and there's so much wisdom that I said, wow, it just blew me away. And, you know, if, if you remember at the beginning, the grandfather says, whenever I read something that I said to myself, I wish I had known this. I wrote it down. I said, that, that's me. Right? Everything I, I found something, I said, wow, I wish I had known this. I wrote it down. So husbandship, you know, this is sort of part of my own journey. I thought, you know, we talk about leadership. People say, well, that's being controlling, even though it's not being controlling. It's really the opposite. So let's make up a new word, and we'll make well, then we'll give it our own definition. So I thought of husbandship, but a man should show husbandship, a man who is married or in a relationship show husbandship so the first thing that you do when you make up a new word is say well let's look it up in the dictionary to see if it exists and what it could possibly mean and I was just so blown away when I looked it up and it already existed and not only it already existed it, it meant exactly what I thought it was what I was going to give it to mean uh, let's just read it from the book here it says, um, it says husbandship is the action of being a husband. Being a husband means being the male head of a household. It means someone who manages his household with skill and thrift. It's also a verb. To husband means to manage prudently and to spend wisely economically. The Oxford, this is from the Oxford English Dictionary. It dates from the 11th century. I said, wow, this is what it's meant all along. It's like someone who's, who's showing leadership, who's careful with what's going on in his home, who's making sure everything is you know, it's the best that he can make it. That's what it means. It's a wow. And that, from the 11th century, I said, wow, this this sort of reflected me the whole, my whole journey. It's like, this is the wisdom that we've lost in this generation that, you know, a husband is, is a role. And he's a leader. He makes sure what's going on in his home is, is done properly. He's not careless with money. He's not careless with, you know, other things. He's raising his children. It's like, this is, this is the definition. It's like, wow. I'm not making it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I remember seeing uh, on the on the one sheet that you uh, wrote to us in the email, it says, uh, as one woman wrote about the insights in my book, if my husband of 38 years had understood these basic but crucial truths, our marriage would not have disintegrated. Um, just uh, um, explain what the basic but crucial truths were, uh, I guess, pertaining to that uh, situation. If you can remember. Well, no, I mean, those, those are really the, those are the three things. Showing leadership, mm-hmm. making decisions, taking responsibility. This is the, the complaint I've heard from so many women that men don't do it. They just, they, they, they're they passive. They step back when they should be stepping forward. Whenever there's decisions to be made, they, they say, oh, you make it. You know, I, I, you know, as a man, I, this was a learning experience for me. Like, I heard a woman complain. You know, we're going on vacation, and my husband told me just to plan the vacation. And I thought, initially, I thought, well, well, is that great? <laughs> she's, he's telling you, do, we'll do whatever you want. And he said, well, he, it makes me feel like he's one of the children. And I said, you know, it really hit me. It's like, you know, you're leaving it all to her. It, it's really like you're one of the children. She wants you to show, show your share of leadership. It's not about being a dictator who, who's ruling over everything. She wants you to show your share of leadership. So if you say, you know, you plan the vacation, we'll do whatever you want. I really, like, when I think back at how initially I thought, well, but that's such a well, wait, what are you complaining about? That's what it is. That's what men think. They think, well, the decision doesn't really matter to me, so you make it, because it doesn't really matter to me, right? Mm-hmm. And often there's a decision, but but she doesn't want that. She wants you to participate and, and show your share of leadership. 
and mm-hmm. making decisions and not not just leave it all to her. Okay. And then the worst thing is that then you blame her if it goes wrong, then you think you can blame her. She doesn't want that. Right. Like, oh, like, I didn't even want to go to whatever, the Bahamas. <laughs> it's your fault. Yeah, it's fine to be. If you go and it turns out to be a disaster, then you can say, well, you can't blame me. It was your decision. Well, she can't blame you because you should have realized it wouldn't be a good thing. Just like, and it turned out bad just like you thought it would. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and then you blame her. You know, the book's not religious, but I do take a story from Adam and Eve. Yes, yes, I, so I saw that. They're yeah. in the Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. The commandment not to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge. And right, Eve eats it, and she pressures Adam to eat it. Then they, God asks him, did you eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge? I commanded you not to eat. And what does he say? He says, the woman you sent me gave it to me, and I ate it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He gave in to something he knew was wrong, and then he blamed his wife. I said, man, that's, I hear all this all the time. <laughs> There's nothing new. Right. <laughs> I heard this is like, whoa, I hear all this all the time, you know, women spending money like crazy, making, you know, irresponsible decisions. Well, if you thought it was irresponsible and you knew it wouldn't work, it was your responsibility to step forward. You can't blame her. Right. Yeah. Um, What are some of the things you told women to inspire men? So there's a couple of things. One is, you know, when, you know, you wanted to make decisions. So when, this decision to be made and he says uh, you know you want to go to restaurant A or restaurant B just say to him you decide and then don't say another word and just let him decide and and compliment him for the decision you know he may do things and he probably will do things differently than you would have decided but unless it's dangerous or damaging just go along and say hey that was a good decision thank you I appreciate it and then if you see situations at home you know that need to be dealt with that could benefit from his leadership. Ask him to take care of it, but don't tell him what to do. Just say, you know, there's this problem over there with our son or our daughter or this problem. Could you take care of it, please? But don't tell him what to do. And he says, well, what should I do? Just say, I don't know. Just do research on the internet. That's what I, what I do. Mm-hmm. And just let him handle it and, and thank him for taking care of it. And again, he may do... What he does may be different than what you would have done, but unless it's dangerous or damaging, just let him do it his way and then tell him how much you appreciate it. Because, women, because men are so afraid of being criticized. They just think, well, she's going to criticize me. Let her just do it her way. Then she won't criticize me. So just let him do it and then praise him for doing it and just keep encouraging him and praise him and tell him how much you appreciate it. And it's like anything else. When you get positive feedback, you want to do it more. And you'll become stronger, more confident in doing it, and and, and soon he will be your hero. <laughs> so, um, so this book was pretty much the uh, inspiration after what uh, has happened to you. So, uh, how long were you um, married for? I was married for ten years. Ten years. I, I just want to say one interesting thing about the book was yes, when please. I wrote it. It was really. For myself, you know, and I thought, well, it's sort of me and my circle of friends, we could all use it. Yeah. And I thought, well, maybe this is a North American phenomenon. But actually, the book has been translated to 24 languages by publishers in Europe, Asia, Latin America, Africa. You know, it's been published by a big publisher in Brazil, where you think every man is so macho. Right. And in Eastern Europe, where you think the men are the traditional head of the family. And in Japan, where you think every man has a geisha. <laughs> you know, it just shows, it showed to me, and it really shows that, you know, men need to learn this. It doesn't come naturally to men. This generation, so many men were not taught this as they were in previous generation. Mm-hmm. Was this sort of like a thing that happened directly with you in, in your uh, marriage? Well, obviously, it was the things that I needed to learn as well, yeah. yeah <laughs> obviously, I, like many, many other men. Right. Very, so, Martini, I, I, yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing... How it changes your relationships now. You're going to apply these things, right? You going to apply them now? Well, yeah. I mean, but like I said, I, it was I was too I was in a, a two mindset about it. I was just like angry because I was like, oh well, why do I? Why do? Why does this need to happen? I don't understand. But but I was agreeing with everything that you. I, I was agreeing with everything that uh, you were saying in the book, which is why I guess I was just having this 
internal struggle <laughs> with myself because like I, I didn't want to comply because i was like man this is making sense but i'm still angry <laughs> like because i i would get that a lot in um my uh courtships and and things like that is like uh, like you're not stepping up or or, or the people you know some women would say you're not stepping up or sometimes i would say well when i do step up you just change what i'm gonna do anyway so you just do it <laughs> like you 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 make the decision and we'll go and 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 it'll be one less right. headache <laughs> you know so I don't, uh, so that, that that was my thing but i really i really did uh i really did like your book it was it was very good it's interesting when i uh like i found women like i used to tell men just read the book don't let your wife see it just do it you'll see things will be a lot better in your marriage <laughs> so what, what, what happened is that women buy the book and it's and, and they give it to their husbands and they ask me how do i get my husband to read it and 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 it's the men when i try to explain it to them they just like it's like they, oh no one's ever told me this before it's like it's like news to them i remember once i was speaking in front of a group of people i right at the front table this man just this man was sitting next to each other they weren't together but she, he turns to this woman and says well he's not right that's not what women want is it and the woman says listen to what he's saying <laughs> this is what women want and it, women know this is what they want it's the men today they just they've never heard this before so many men have said to me why didn't anyone ever tell me this before? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's because they weren't taught it in this generation. Right. And I found something else that was interesting, too, where uh, in the book, well, in the book and what you've been saying uh, th throughout this uh, episode, where is that uh, a woman just, do just doesn't want you to comply with everything that she says. Like, she'll give you more respect if you, well, I don't want to say defy her, but if you go against what she's saying. And I thought that was always weird because it's like, well, I mean, if you're if you're saying, hey, let's hey, let's go someplace. I, I remember I was talking to my friend and uh, he's married and she wanted to go to uh, her mom's house. So they all wanted. So she wanted him to go to the mom's house. And he was like, no, he's like, but why? Like, I, I like, let's go. I like I, I want us to all hang out. And he's like, no, I'm tired and I really don't want to do it. So he told me that, yeah, that there was some bickering for like a little bit, but then everything like smoothed over or smoothed over and she didn't like hate him, but she, she almost like kind of gained respect for him. Cause it's like, okay, she, he, he didn't just, you know, uh, he wasn't a pushover. Uh, you know, I can't do everything that I right. want with him. Right. A woman who respects man who has backbone and has a spine. That's really what it is. Mm -hmm. She only wants men who has has backbone and can stand up to her and because if he can't stand up to her he won't be able to stand up for her and often it's a test to see if he can if he can stand up to her because she wants a man who's strong enough to stand up for her and protect her mm -hmm. and if you just give in it's like she just sees you as spineless and she has no respect for you and you think oh but i'm doing everything she wants why does she why is she so fed up with me mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. So, do the do the tests ever end? <laughs> I, I think at some point they end. Yeah, because when she feels comfortable that you're the rock that she could lean on and depend on, then she won't test you anymore. Mm -hmm. All right, because <laughs> it always seems like we're always being tested in, in, in every given time, and they're secret too. <laughs> like that's the thing, and then they like they hit you with the well, you didn't do this last week, and you're like, whoa, I didn't know I was being tested. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but you know, she doesn't necessarily have to test you if you show that right from the start that you're a leader and you're strong. Yeah, and, and you're taking charge, and she won't. She may not feel a need to test you because she sees you are that rock that she can lean on. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um. Well, well, I'm sorry that Jennifer really didn't have uh, much to say. She got, she got she got a little under the weather actually, and she left uh, mid podcast. But uh, I'm sure she'll listen to this on the playback. But uh, I th thank you so much for being on the show. It was very pleasant having you. Okay, if people want to contact me. They yes. can Contact me through my website, which is www.elliotcats.com. It's e l l i o t t double t k a t z dot com and the book, Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants, Timeless Wisdom on Being a Man, is available as a paperback on Amazon and as an e-book on Kindle and Kobo and iBooks. And it's also available, the paperback is also available in bookstores. And if you go into the store and they're sold out, 
just ask them to order it and they'll get it to you pretty quickly. But I'd be happy to hear from people who have questions, comments, if they get a chance to read the book, their thoughts, I'd be, I welcome it. Because I'm really, you know, tra- tra- promoting a discussion. I'm just trying to get the message out because really there's too many divorces, there's too many children from broken homes. And, and if these insights can help a man improve his marriage, like the feedback I have received from, you know, some male readers, then, then uh, you know, let, let, let's keep moving it forward. No, it, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It is it is a very uh, good book. I, I like it a lot. I'm, I'll definitely... Uh reference it when i'm when i'm uh, talking to people it was very it was very interesting and and i will definitely uh put your email so so well not well your um the email in the book so they can uh give you their insight and and, and stuff like that after after they uh read it but thank you so much elliot for being on the show okay thank you also i also have a facebook page which is, a, is the same name as the book being the strong man a woman wants okay but beautiful I, if you like that page and that post articles that i've written on it it's, it's, the idea is to get a movement going so men act like men so they marriages don't break down, down and children aren't from broken homes so, so all right keep it going um is is just to answer uh, to ask one more question is this book on uh, audible so is it on what audible well not yet that's something one of the things i want to do yeah okay yeah yeah definitely yeah the, that's that would be a, a definite good move because uh a lot of people just like you know, like listening while they're at the gym or while they're driving. So, but right, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, no, the, thank you so much, Elliot. Okay, thank you, Martina and Jennifer. Great talking to you. All right, you have a good day. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye. All right, so that was Elliot Katz for um, the being a strong man, a woman wants timeless wisdom on being a man. So yeah, that was that was really good, and that was a really good talk. And this is a really good book. I definitely suggest everybody should get this. Um, you can get it at uh, Amazon and everywhere that uh, he said iBooks. This is a very good book. And so I I leave the question to you. What do you, or to the women out there? I know you saw the I know you saw the title of this episode, and you were like, mm-hmm. all these men they don't know what they want. Yeah, I I have a lot of issues with men. So what's going on? Let me know. Uh, what do what do you think is your biggest issue with men? Uh, do uh, or do you think that we're perfect? <laughs> what, what's going on? I want to hear. I want to hear your uh, your discussion. Please email us at bellovebeyond at gmail dot com, or you can go to our website for much more articles on this topic and all of Elliot's information. Go to www.bedlovebeyond.com. dot com. You can give us a call or text us at two zero one eight six two eight bed. That is 201-862-8233. Or you can go on our Facebook and talk to the fans about this subject. You can go to www.facebook.com slash bedlovebeyond. And you can follow us at bedlovebeyond on Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, and YouTube. All right, that is the end of the show. I'm Martini, and thanks, guys, for listening.